So the only thing that appears to be holding this apart is this SIG clamp or seal or nut, whatever you want to call it, which comes off with very handily this little piece right here. In other words, a jeweler screwdriver. So, uh, it appears that we have everything out. All the screws to dismantle our Thrustmaster uh, flight stick. And it's all because it broke right here and right here. Now, I've put some uh, magnets on this thing and it's definitely not steel. More likely pot metal. And the way I've been told that you can tell about pot metal is it can be die cast. That is to say, cast in another piece of metal. And you can do that very rapidly and very, very, very accurately as opposed to sand casting, which requires a lot of after tooling. Bottom line is, um, that's why we're doing what we're doing here. So, we got all four screws out. Uh, five screws actually nine screws total four on the top one where's that other one two right there three is that one right there yeah four and five total of nine now I'm gonna I think that this is gonna pull apart it's already as loose as you can see but let's see if we can get that to happen ah. okay so there's the part that broke off and we're gonna do a very narrow or slow camera movement and then we'll come up and out so y'all can take a screenshot of what's there again my problem is that this part broke off from that part come on this is a thrust master okay Now, if you look closely, you can see that these wires terminate in the back end of the plug, go through the housing, and come up here, which is uh, this interesting little piece, which was never connected. And interestingly enough, this physical little piece right here never had another screw on the right hand side to accompany this one but that means that this piece is removable and in fact a part that can be replaced so we need to do some disconnection or unsoldering from the bottom and if they were smart in the design uh, it'll be one of these plugs here 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 or here or here and uh, the whole assembly can be the whole wiring assembly can come once unplugged come back down through here through here and back out here as you can see these uh, screws have been removed but it's not coming out through the front end because it can't it won't fit so they stuck the piece in here in the manufacturing process brought the wires through the back part through this tube 
And uh, what color are those wires? Green, orange, red, yellow, black, and is that gray? Gray. I don't think all of them are used. So we have to find a corresponding clip. If they were smart, as I said, it's going to be one of these connectors because it's pretty well, the board's pretty well laid out. The rest of them are just simply switches. The board interprets those switches and then feeds the signal through probably some sort of USB protocol out through this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five pin. Looks like a DIN plug, doesn't it? Or maybe, uh, remember all the uh, VHS? Uh, what was the name of that? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It may even match the, uh, the DIN-like plug that we had and still have on a lot of our motherboards to connect a uh, PC-style keyboard or mouse. When I said that and get over here that uh, this area was disconnected and we had this free pin and this three connector well obviously when I pulled these wires out this right here disconnected from this connector right here so we'll plug that back in when we uh, get going. Also, all those wires, except for, it looks like black and brown. I didn't recall seeing a brown. Did, did I call that gray? Go up through here uh, to one of these switches and I don't know where yet. I'm going to have to cut this tie to find out and redo the tie as nicely as they did really simple because as it turns out you know this this big guy right here goes here guess where the other two brown wires go right there I just pulled this out from underneath the tie and you can see very neatly that just this connector and that connector are involved and will go right on through and uh, as they say bada boom or bada bing bada boom if we can get this replacement part everything goes back the way it was note that we have a little uh, ground strap right here that there's this black wire comes around under here maybe I can shed, shed some light on it the black wire comes out of here you see where it's coming out of the barrel here and attaches right there but that looks like a screw attachment rather than a weld or a solder joint so this is just an eye and that may come slide on through too but that's obviously a ground or at least black is conventionally a ground note that there is a split uh, washer there in other words a friction lock washer under this guy and that needs to be back and it appears to be a flat washer underneath it um, and that black and tan cable does not go on through but it's actually held down by that uh, that strip that what do you call it and, and it actually goes to this switch here which is the pause switch for me but it's the switch is it yeah that's the lower uh, switch that the lever goes over so is there a lever that's a switch and then there's this switch what i which i use for pause 
right there. Anyway, the wire goes from there underneath this tie tie and over to this first position. So it's, it doesn't even have to come through and nothing needs to be disconnected except for the tie tie and we should be able to remove the assembly. I've taken out the uh, screw on this side and uh, we'll be good to go, I think. Well, it certainly does tax your uh, inventory of small tools. Uh, I got three sizes of forceps on eBay and I probably pay away with too much money. But I found this guy and uh, I can't tell you how many times that I have used this. Maybe uh, my wife can help me. No, she's got her hands full. And so, there we here. So, what we're going to do to cut the tie tie is use either these clippers or those clippers, or looky here, these scissors or these. And this, isn't this great? This is a great little travel kit. eBay, I uh, know. Um, Amazon, can't tell you which one it is. If you uh, send me a request, I'll look it up for you. You could probably find it before you get back from me. But bottom line is we're going to use that guy and snip this snip right there. Where is it? Get your finger on it. Right there. But I'm going to use two hands to do that. So, sorry. I'm going to have to uh, quit shooting. Right. So, once the tie-tie is snipped, Right there, liberating these two brown wires, we can pull it off and uh, get rid of it. And we should be able to pull this through. Let's see. Well, the whole thing comes out and about. Here's the part that needs replacing, and guess what? Everything, please, come through nicely. There we go. Liberating this piece, which broke off from this piece, which should look like, uh, how can I do this? This. But. This is the assembly that takes all the strain on these two nuts here and snap. With this side not even being connected, there was not a screw. And in this side, there was a screw, as you saw. So we are going to replace by the way all that comes through broken right broken piece one watch this i think we can now push this through ah how am i going to do this see if i can wiggle it Now, by virtue of the fact that this guy, which we just pulled through, this guy, who should have been attached to this guy there, uh, this guy, by virtue of the fact that it's screwed in, must be a separate piece. And I'm going to try, and uh, I'm not going to 
dramatizes. I will tell you that I used a this pair of needle nose to, as I told my son, the secret to everything is wiggling. And so I wiggled it, kind of like, let's see if we can kind of reproduce the situation. I'm putting this under my neck. I don't know if I'm going to drop it or what. But I'm not doing this again. So I either got it or I didn't. So there we are. That piece is coming back into the new piece, which is really that, which obviously attaches. The, that came out of that which came apart from that which screws down onto the base like that and this part holds it together that means all the force is on these two screws and this screw right here was missing it was only attached with this one right there so, Thrustmaster, I need a new one of these, but that looks like that, and it's not made out of pot metal, made out of stainless, <laughs> yeah, as if, by the way, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is pot metal, the way you can tell is that uh, pot metal is, uh, I, I, when I looked it up, I said, what the heck is pot metal, and uh, the story goes that whenever there are any spare metal around, you throw it in a pot and uh, use whatever got melted together. And uh, the cool thing about pot metal is that it can be used in dye uh, uh, forging or dye, uh, what do you call it? Casting, dye casting. And it's very, very accurate. And that's how you can tell because of the accuracy of the pieces. And if there's any metal, I mean, any numbers on it, I read <clears throat> the numbers on a, on a pot metal piece. Uh, yes, it's trash metal. It's made up of zinc and copper and maybe aluminum and who knows what else. But anyway, it turns out that it has... Uh, a melting point that's lower than all of its constituents. I think uh, that was called a eutectic. I could be wrong. Kind of like solder. Anyway, bottom line is that pot metal can be cast very, very accurately in metal uh, forms and used over and over and over again in that metal form. And the way you can tell a, a die cast from a sand cast is the accuracy of the pieces and if you see numbers you will see them very very clearly on a die cast piece and uh, very uh, smudgily in for instance either a steel or an aluminum sand cast piece for instance uh, or iron for instance, a uh, cylinder or a uh, engine case casting. So that's where we are. And uh, I'll get in touch with, make a photo of this guy. And you can do the same. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll be getting that part in another couple of weeks. In the meantime, trying to fly with a stinking what you call it, a uh, mouse as yolk. Not much fun. All right. See ya. So here is the piece, and I've marked it so that I could easily put it back together again.
to see precisely how it was connected but the bottom line is Thrustmaster needs to get me this piece ASAP and in the meantime I'm going to try a, an alloy uh, method of uh, brazing that I saw on YouTube whose uh, site I will uh, include in this report so just so you know I'm not BSing oops here is the let's see if we can focus right on that piece you can see it at all angles and this piece here doesn't that look like an insert in there of a different metal everything's fine down here the problem is right there and we'll put that back together again and you can see how perfectly it joins I guess it might take some microscopy to uh, get this to to diagnose why it failed where it did but it was right there in the in that uh, lip that it parted as I said in my little uh, dramatic whoops <laughs> my little dramatic piece where it experienced quote catastrophic failure to happen.